Firstly, I want you all to lift your arm over your head. OK, now you can put it back down. In just about five seconds, you were able to complete this simple task, right? But I'm about to summarize the complexity of what just happened inside. Now we're well aware that our circulatory system is constantly pumping blood to the parts of our body. Now in this case, your blood was rushing towards your brain in order to alert it of the function you wanted to carry out by supplying firing neurons with glucose and oxygen they require for energy. We can look at these as a specialized cell in our brain called and in the part of our brain called the motor cortex. Let's look at this from an automotive approach where the motor cortex functions like an engine rather than a steering wheel. This means that parts of the cortex all work cooperatively and in an organized way to produce several actions rather than a movement directly. Now a rhythm in your brain will generate a pattern that allows information transmission leading to muscle contraction. But since this requires some strength, your blood will rush towards the muscle in order to replenish oxygen and glucose so that you can finally lift up your arm. So good evening, everyone. Today, I hope to enlighten you all on how we come about from a single cell to a complete human body consisting of 37 trillion cells. Truly, we are a complex machine. Now, just as the world around us is ever changing, we're aware that the human body too has been evolving since prehistoric times. We are the intricate products of a delightful evolution that has lasted like six million years. Now, just about a few billion years ago, the Earth as we now know it was vastly different. Man as we know merely did not exist. Only once the human lineage broke away from that of our ancestors did our becoming come about as Homo sapiens. Now, Homo sapiens is the scientific term used to refer to our abode of existence, the human body. But how does said human body originate? What allows us to function the way we do and appear the way we are? Well, I'm here to give you all a comprehensive insight on exactly this, our existence. So we all start off as a tiny cell, the product of the fusion of a sperm cell and egg cell. After this, the changes our body goes through are admirable. From this minuscule cell, we develop into a blastula, which is a collection of cells that develops into the embryo, which implants itself into the mother's womb's wall and finally develops into the fetus, which is the baby. Now, throughout our growth and development, um, our body is constantly supplying us with nutrients we require to survive. Now, a significant requirement here is the blood. The blood makes up about 8% of our body's mass and is a mixture of plasma and form elements. These formed elements come about from pluripotent stem cells, which give us erythrocytes that are your red blood cells, leukocytes that help protect your body against infection, and thrombocytes that help in blood clotting. Here, the red blood cells play such a significant role in your survival as they provide our hearts with oxygen they require to function effectively. Our bodies have about 4.8 to 5.4 million red blood cells per microliter. Now, this means that there are like 25 trillion red blood cells in our human bodies. In addition to this, red blood cells die at a rate of about 2 million cells per second, which means they also need to be produced at a rate of 2 million cells per second, proving the significance. So now we can summarize the key functions of the roles of blood. So the blood is a transport medium for oxygen, a protector of our body against infection, and a regulator of body temperature. But now that we know this role, how does the blood get to the parts of the body in order to carry out all of these functions? For this, we have our transport system. This is inclusive of the heart that is constantly maintaining blood flow so that your cells get all the oxygen and energy it requires. And this is known as the circulatory system. Now our circulatory system is so complex that if we were to lay out all of our arteries, veins, and capillaries end-to-end, -end, it would stretch to about 60,000 miles. 
Now we can compare this to the Earth's circumference. That is 25,000 miles, which means that an average person's blood vessels could wrap around the Earth like 2.5 times. Likewise, our brain and nervous system are equally intricate. Our brain consists of 86 billion neurons. Now, if you can recollect, these neurons are in charge of transmitting impulses and information to our cells, muscles, or simply other neurons in the body. Along with these, we have about 84.6 billion glial cells, which are in charge of homeostasis and also protecting and supporting these neurons. Now, guys, just through the assistance of these two specialized cells, we are able to carry out so many processes like basic motor functions, having visualization, coordination, balance, getting sleep, and even storing memories. And all of these are just the basic examples of a few functions that our brain can carry out. Now, have you ever wondered why you cannot tickle yourself? Well, you can try, but you probably didn't laugh. Now, this is because of our nervous system that is constantly active and our sensory attention that is reserved for signals from our external environment. So when we move to tickle ourselves, a part in the brain called the cerebellum warns your body that this action is approaching and this just causes the sensory part of your brain to ignore the sensation, proving that this gelatinous mass of just a few kilograms is so intelligent and well brainy that it can predict your own sensory actions and differentiate them. Mind blown yet? Well, it gets better. All of this was just the basic blueprint of a human body, all the complex systems that are part of each of us. I haven't even started on the things that make us unique. Take, for example, the tailbone. Most of you must be aware of this small bone located at the bottom of our spine, known as the tailbone, also called the corsix. This bone is actually a remnant of evolution from our ancestors, the apes, who did in fact have tails. And let me tell you this, at one point of our lives, we have all had tails. Crazy, right? But it's true. This is when we're about four weeks into gestation in our mother's womb, when our basic body plan is being laid out. However, the cells in our, the human cells in a tail are programmed to die a few weeks after they appear, so we are not likely to grow this tail. So human tails are rare, right? But there have been over 10 cases of children being born with two vestigial tails as the ancestral blueprint prevails. This just shows us that the human body is full of surprises. And as one may assume that all human beings' anatomy is the same, this is not the case. Another example is the pulmaris longus. Now, if you all extend your arm horizontally outwards, like so, and touch your pinky finger to your thumb, flexing your wrist, you may notice a muscle in your wrist pop. This is the pulmaris longus. Now, you can also observe this with the bunched finger test, where you do the same, except bunch all your fingers together and flex your wrist to notice this prominent tendon. Now, if you do not see it, well, you're probably part of the 16% of this population that lacks the muscle. Note that the lack of this muscle doesn't really have any negative effects on your wrist movement or grip, and even its removal doesn't cause any motility changes. So don't panic. The example was simply given to emphasize the variation in each of our human anatomies once again. So this is the human body, a complex, intricate system that has come into existence over a period of six million years. With not just the basic elements that are a part of each of us, but everything else that makes us unique. I hope that you have observed and absorbed the elaborateness of our human body and everything it does to keep us alive. Though easy to take these processes for granted, I hope that you can remember this hard work and always appreciate your body and its consistency in being your residence, your constant in a world that is far too transient. One may look at our body as merely a structure that we abide in, but this is being so ignorant to all of these complex mechanisms and functions that are taking place to do simple tasks like lifting your arm up or thinking a thought. So 
your body is not just a structure or edifice like a house, but in fact, it is your home. Your place that feels good and comfortable, a place that makes that protects you, a place that makes you feel like you can rely on it for the safety and security of yourself. Unlike a house that is just a scaffolding of four walls and a roof, your home is made up of everything else inside it, from the people to the furnishing. Likewise, our, our human bodies are made up of billions of cells, muscles, tissues, organs that are all working together to keep you alive and make you who you are. So take care of it, for it is the one place you can always return to, as it is your home within the skin. Thank you.